The Allen Am first opened in 1890, operating 24-7 for, well, for well over 100 years. Sam Martin, William, William F. Mosby, and the first of many proprietors of the legendary saloon, eatery, and gambling house. That's operated here since 1890. Although Martin and Mosby's tenure is short, youth's love of nicknames endured, and their final initials remained as the M&M. For more than a century, the M&M never rested, serving customers around the clock. The doors were always unlocked, and each subsequent owner ceremoniously and publicly disposed of the keys. The M&M catered to minors coming off the shift, while the kitchen served bountiful breakfast at any hour of the day or night. When Prohibition hit, the M&M followed other view cars, officially becoming cigar store. Cigars sold in the front of the street with the speakers of the background. The liquor continued to flow. The 1940s Art Deco ground floor for decade. The M&M spectacular neon sign, a vintage 1890s upper level, have been refurbished, restoring architectural vitality to the landmark that has provided food, drink, and provision to generations of youth residents. It is 25 feet long and extends underneath the North Main Street sidewalk. This space originally was built to be the lobby of a once very smart looking 1912 boarding rooming house slash upscale hotel, the Brookwood Hotel. The Brookwood Hotel lobby had thick terrazzo tile flooring, wooden wainscoting on the walls, marble walls and floors, a double door Otis elevator, a wrought iron spiral staircase, and a lot of architectural and design flourishes including stained glass skylights, hardwood moldings, and mythical griffins carved into the ceiling. This building was going for the high class joint style, style aimed at folks interested in having a nice boarding room, or perhaps this was an upscale hotel aimed at the wealthy. Many hotels during Prohibition had their own speakeasies. This illegal drinking establishment, the Rookwood Speakeasy, was well thought out. The experience of going to enjoy your favorite alcoholic drink began by going to a first Door, where the potential customer rang a doorbell, which let those know inside of a potential customer, or a troublemaker on the outside. Once the door opened, the customer finds him or herself in a foyer, complete with a coat rack and a large two-way mirror, so the doorkeeper could get a good look. Another masonite door had a sliding people for a closer inspection by the doorkeeper and or bouncer. An added precaution was that the door was reinforced by a sturdy wood bar lock to slow down or stop efforts to kick down the door easily by police or other hostile folks like Carrie and Asian wanting to be party poopers. In 1912, the Rookwood Hotel was built by James Pratt, a businessman slash merchant who operated his red boot and shoe company out of the ground floor space right next to the hotel entrance. Now on to the BS Cafe. Like many Midwestern towns, there were tunnels and walkways under the city streets and the lobby of the hotel would be underground leaving the building above ground to have most, the most rooms possible. 45 rooms for rental. No one knows how long this speakeasy was open, but it was sealed and locked at some point, leaving everything as was during the 1920s through 1930s, creating a time capsule. It was forgotten for a long, long time. Most people believe the Rookwood is extremely haunted. The three main spirits believed to roam this area are the Spirit Boy, Curly, and the Enforcer. The Rookwood Speakeasy Museum is in the basement of the old Rookwood Hotel building, now called the L.A. Salah Apartments, across the alley from the old Butte City Hall building, an old police station. Prohibition was an ill-conceived idea that declared that all alcohol was bad and forbidden. From 1919 to 1933, a defiant public were offered places called speakeasies to go, and imbibe in their favorite drinks. Some cities more than others. In Butte, a mining town, there were 350 illegal bars, according to one source. That moved under the streets of Butte or in hidden rooms of businesses. The local police simply looked the other way, especially if the speakeasy paid them a fee. Even a legitimate business pays fees to the city to have a business license. The Board of Trade Saloon was a saloon of the southeast corner of Park and Main. It was in business from 1884 through 1916 and attracted all types of people regularly. In Butte's heyday, the late 1910s, the Atlantic reportedly had a dozen bartenders jumping like turkeys on a hot griddle on a typical Saturday night. The Atlantic was one of Butte's most famous drinking establishments for its claim to be 
the longest bar in the world. If nothing else, the bar was nearly the length of the narrow 110, of, of the narrow 110 by 20 foot building, reaching the alley between, between Park and Galena Streets in 1900. The building ended at the alley. It's said that the bar continued across the alley into the building that faced Galena Street, and that the Galena building was destroyed by an, in a 1909 fire. But there's no real evidence that such a continuation existed.